Well, good morning, Quiet Dale and Monroe Chapel. Welcome to your Sunday morning worship. Charlie and Ezra and I are here to uh, welcome you in and say hello. We are glad that you are here and glad you've joined us for today. Um, and so if you will, join me in a word of prayer as we get started. Lord, we thank you for one more day, and we thank you for um, each and every person in our churches. We ask that you would be with them in their houses. Uh, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you lead us? Lord, as we listen to your word, would you um, touch our hearts and would we be open to what you have for us for today? Uh, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you to take a posture of prayer as we go before the Lord this morning. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your goodness and love. May you come and be among us today. May your presence be known to us. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those around the world who are suffering right now. We pray for those who are impacted economically from this virus, Lord. We pray for those who are sick and unwell. We pray for uh, doctors and nurses and those on the front lines of fighting this virus, Lord. We pray for healing and for uh, just restoration, Lord, of all of the things that have been lost. I pray, Lord, that this is a season of awakening, that people will uh, realize their need for you and will begin seeking you once again. With, I pray, Lord, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we lift up all of the needs in our community that we have, Lord. Now we Take a moment to lift up those needs that are on our hearts by praying them aloud or silently in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that you are always more quick to listen than we are to pray. We ask that you would meet each of these needs according to your riches and glory, Lord. And now we join our voices together as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in our service, we take up our offerings, and so uh, at this point, we invite you to turn, send in your offerings, uh, submit them online, and uh, we... Uh, these offerings go to continue the mission of the church. Though we are physically distant, though we are uh, worshiping uh, apart from one another, we continue to serve a good and gracious God. I invite you to uh, sing together the doxology. Praise. 
Good morning. Uh, this is the sixth Sunday after Easter, and uh, what a great day it is for uh, us to be here this, uh, this morning. We're looking out on the congregation, and I only see actually two people here this, mor this morning, but as I look out on the congregation, I uh, see the Craig uh, and Sue Burns family over here, and I see Trina over here, and I see the Sandy family over there, and Don and Phyllis Knight, and back in the back, uh, Jerry and uh, uh, Bill and Virginia, and the Bastines in the back, and uh, Bob and Cindy uh, Zontak, and, and uh, Bob and uh, uh, Cheryl Benson, and Dan and Barbara. Uh, so I, if I could spend the time to, to name all of you, I'd uh, probably be here for hours and hours to, to share and to, and to share the remembrance. But what a great opportunity it is to be here um, this morning. And, and uh, you know that Nathan and Lauren are babysitting uh, now, taking care of a new young child. And I think Lauren has three children now, not only Nathan, but Ezra and also the dog. So, uh, you know, she's got her hands full. So um, I'm here uh, taking the place of Nathan. I give him thanks uh, for allowing me to do this and, and, uh, and also grace be unto you this morning and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalm 67 uh, verses 1 through 2 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us. May he cause his face to shine upon us that his purpose may be known on earth, his saving power among all nations. I want to read to you this morning from uh, Revelation, the 21st chapter, and uh, also the 22nd chapter of Revelation, uh, from Revelation 21, verse 10, then moving down to verse 22, and then through 20, chapter 22, verse 5. And the title of my message for you this morning is Return to Eden, a story of now and not yet. Hear the word of God this morning. Verse 10. He took me in a spirit-inspired trance to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And then moving down to verse 22. I didn't see a temple in the city because its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it because God's glory is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day and there will be no night there. They will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is vile and deceitful, but only those who are registered in the Lamb's scroll of life. And then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, shining like crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will shine on them and they will rule forever and always. The reading of God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let the words of our mouth this morning, O Lord, and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength, and you're also our redeemer, and it is your name we pray. Amen. When my son was um, just a young boy, little boy, really, 
he got hooked on the, the Star Wars series. And uh, so he began to ask for Christmas Legos to begin to build um, these starships that you see on the Star Wars trilogy. And now he's got not only himself, he still is involved in it very deeply, but now he has our grandson, Fisher, doing the same thing. When I was coming home from work or from the, the church, from visiting my young son, uh, and now my grandson doing the same thing, would always say, hey, Dad, may the force be with you. How many people out there right now are Star Wars fans? As time goes on, the sci-fi action series seems to get really more popular. The, the trilogies are on almost every week anymore on TV. P perhaps its popularity is connected uh, to its theme, the age-old battle between good and evil. And after much distress and hardship, good triumphs over the dark lord, and the city responds in celebration. And finally, the dark lord's reign has ended, and a new season filled with peace and justice and prosperity has come. Is this not what our hearts yearn for today? With all of this going on around us, a time of, of healing, of justice, a time when there won't be so much pain in the world over this uh, uh, virus, COVID-19, a time when there won't be so much pain in our own lives uh, because of the illnesses that, that, are, uh, that some of our families have been affected by. You see, we, we want that time to come. We want to see that kingdom come. Well, the book of Revelation gives us hope that a time of jubilation and celebration is indeed coming for us. The author of John is writing to Christians who are now under siege and, and they are being persecuted by the Roman Empire and torn between their culture and their faith they struggle to remain loyal to Christ and avoid the temptation to yield to their persecutors. And amid this tension, John writes down his vivid prophecy. Unfortunately, we've, uh, it seems, lost touch with John's style of communicating. We no longer write in his style either, or we don't even speak his language or even use his imagery anymore. And despite all of these obstacles, his message uh, rings clear for us today. A battle rages between God and Satan, and God is the ultimate victor. His kingdom is transformed into a new heaven and a new earth. Jerusalem is established anew for us. This new Jerusalem that John describes in Revelation is, is a glorious, glorious place. It is a redeemed garden of Eden. And there, a death will be no more, mourning and crying, and if I may insert, disease and pain will be no more, as Revelation 21, 4 describes to us. There will be no more wars, or there will never be any more famine. The nations will be healed. A river of living water will flow constantly from the Lord's throne. And the trees that line its banks will bear fruit all year long. It is in this glorious new city, this new garden of Eden, where God will be united anew with his people. And there he will rule the new heaven and the new earth, and there we will find God's glory shining. In this new Jerusalem, the Lord will be light, the light. If I may for a moment just say, I, I long to see that light and that sight of that new Jerusalem 
the glory of the Lord uh, so concentrated and, and bright that the sun and the moon are no longer needed to cast light onto our world anymore. I long to be in the presence of the Lord most high. I mean, I long to see the river of life and, and the ever-blooming trees. His return has been, you know, so long in coming. Many of us, many of us stop and we ask the question, when, Lord, when will you return to rule? When will you shine your light upon your people? Well, I want to take a moment this morning here to talk more about the use of light in this section of text. The author, you see, makes a point to contrast light and darkness. The light is God, his glory and holiness. It fills the, the whole city. I've always admired the lights in our sanctuary, and I admire the sun that is out right now, so bright. But you know, the light is God. And his light is even much more brighter than all that we can imagine. His glory and holiness. It, it, it fills the whole world, really. But more than that, it is symbolic of all that is good and righteous. The nations will walk by this light. The light will allow them to walk without physically stumbling, but it will also become a part of their lifestyle. They will no longer stumble spiritually. Nothing unclean, nothing unholy, nothing false will be allowed there. Oh, there will, there, there will be no night. Uh, there will no, be no darkness. All of creation will be transformed. That's what it'll be like, I think, when God returns. Our lives will be transformed because of what we're going through in this day and age with this virus. But you know, in the end, God is still on the throne and, still, and God still brings the light into our lives. The physical darkness that we're experiencing along with the spiritual darkness will be wiped away. In, in Acts chapter 26, verse 17 and 18, Jesus tells Paul, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Revelation 21, verse 22 to chapter 22, verse 5, gives you and I a, a beautiful picture of what this will look like in, in the New Jerusalem. Those who are in this new city will be surrounded, surrounded by God's light and, and, and God's power. There will be no darkness left. Satan will have been defeated and light will reign, will reign forever. Glory, honor, holiness, righteousness, and love will abound. You know, this distinct contrast that the author makes between light and darkness uh, made me think of this world we live in now. Our world is not as black and white as the new world to come will be. There is still much good here, but also there is much darkness because of what is happening around us today. Shadows cast dull silhouettes on the rays of light penetrating our lives. We hear so many stories of pain and, and hardship, stories about our Christian brothers and sisters around the world being persecuted because of this virus, and about the wars that divide nations and, and peoples, and about the famines that claim the lives of thousands each year. 
If you read the paper on Friday morning, you'll notice the number of businesses closing because of all of this virus. Yet we also have our own stories of darkness too. Perhaps we have been hurt by our loved ones or uh, have seen the pain of our friends and, and our relatives as they have struggled to overcome a disease or illness. How long, O oh Lord, will we have to live in the midst of darkness? Where will your new Jerusalem come? When? When? When I was at Duke, I, I had a professor who, for me, was, a, was a, probably the wisest man I've ever met. If I could have transferred his information over into my, into my head, it would be bigger than it is now. But in class, he, he told us that the kingdom of God is now and not yet. Think about that now and not yet perhaps the new jerusalem is here among us right now perhaps it is here but only in part jesus said i am the light of the world in john 8 verse 12 he shared that light with his disciples and he asked them to let their light shine before others so that they too could turn to God and give praise in Matthew 5, verse 16. He called them to be lights to the nations, to spread the good news that Christ has risen. Jesus' call was not limited to his disciples over 2,000 years ago. His call is also for you and me today, for us today. It is for the now. We are God's light and God's glory here on earth now as we wait eagerly for the not yet. We can see the new Jerusalem only in part now. We can't possibly fathom how magnificent and holy it will be. So as we wait, though, we, we get a glimpse of its future glory. As I am here this morning, you have a food bank, and I see Ellen Alville back there uh, preparing food for those who are in need. Well, when we help someone in need, there's a glimpse of the future glory of God. When we share what the Lord has done in our lives, when we sing a hymn of praise to our creator, when we are, are broken and restored by God's grace, when we do what is right, even when everyone else is doing wrong, when we forgive someone who does not deserve to be forgiven, when we live with a passion that conveys that we know the truth and that the truth has set us free. When we do all of this, then we are lights. Then we are lights. And then we get a glimpse of the coming glory of God that will fill new Jerusalem with light and liberty and, and love. Just uh, yesterday afternoon, I uh, saw a commercial on television. It was a young man carrying an Amazon box up to the house where this little girl was in the window, in a picture window. And the song came across, the song that we often sing, but we don't sing often enough. It's a very simple song. And I'd like to share that song with you in closing this morning as we close out our service and I'm going to change the words a little bit if I may this little light of ours we're going to let it shine this little light of ours we're going to let it shine this little light of ours 
We're gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Be safe, stay at home. God is still on the throne watching over us and surrounding us with his love, his grace, and his mercy. God bless you all. Amen. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Ark, how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Shall not fail throughout eternity.